Discover Juba City, South Sudan's capital, the world's youngest nation. Juba is a town in South Sudan that serves as the country's capital. It is a river port located about 140 kilometers south of Bor on the west bank of the Bar Al Jabal, Mountain Nile. Juba serves as a market for agricultural items grown in the surrounding region. It is a highway hub with routes branching into Uganda, Kenya, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, as well as a southern terminal for river traffic in South Sudan. It boasts an international airport, as well as a number of bank branches. The town is home to the University of Juba, which was founded in 1975. Prior to attaining independence in 2011, South Sudan was a part of Sudan, its northern neighbor. Juba was the site of a conference in 1947, when the Sudan was still a colonial holding under joint British and Egyptian administration, where representatives of the northern and southern parts of the Sudan agreed to unify, putting an end to Britain's hopes of annexing the southern part of the Sudan to Uganda. Unification, on the other hand, did not go well, and Juba, as the capital of southern Sudan, became the focal point of southern resistance to northern dominance. The region. Juba is surrounded by enormous swaths of land. As far as the eye can see, rolling hills and broad valleys stretch out in front of you. Because of its location on the river and the bridge that spans the Nile, Juba is considered a crossroads of regional activity. Proximity to neighboring nations such as Uganda and Kenya boosts regional and international trade. The resources. Natural resources abound in Juba and its surroundings. The Nile River's banks are lined by fertile fields. The town's outskirts are sparsely populated with cultivated grounds, and many locals commute to their modest subsistence farms on foot every day. The Nile River's power lends itself to being a viable source of energy production. Freshwater fish abound in the river waters, which could help to boost the fishing business. The area near Juba is remarkably rich in petroleum. The extraction of natural resources is likely to have a substantial impact on South Sudan's economy. <music> territorial structure For governance, Juba's territorial structure is modeled around traditional tribal structures. The boma or village community made up of households within a tribe is found at the most local level. Village communities elect a tribal chief who serves as a counselor and a clearinghouse for tribal decision-making. A payam, or town, is a collection of settlements. The county, which consists of villages and towns as well as the rural settlements that surround them, is the next organizational level up. County governments represent their founding communities and state government, which is made up of the national government. This structure has been combined with the North's governance system in Juba. In and around Juba, IDPS and refugees from neighboring countries such as Ethiopia, and Congo have gathered in mixed neighborhoods. A number of tribes have established themselves in the city, and they continue to follow their tribal governance structure through the election of a tribal chief, despite the fact that a particular tribe may be fractured and dispersed throughout the town, geographically separating members of a tribe from their local chief. Local neighborhoods were divided into areas named Hellas under the municipal organization as it was held by the North. The administration assigned Sheikh al Hala or head of area, leaders from the community to these locations. To handle community-related concerns, the sheikh serves as a link between the tribally and ethnically diverse neighborhoods and the administrative units. Because the sheikh is selected by the municipality, there are times when tensions occur about how the community views its own representation in the absence of an electoral procedure for a neighborhood leader, especially when tribal custom dictates that a chief be elected through democratic methods. South Sudanese Culture The majority of South Sudanese people share a cultural bond based on their shared Christian faith and battle for independence from North Sudan. South Sudanese, on the other hand, are more likely to feel cultural attachment and devotion to their tribal and ethnic groupings than to the country. Moreover, despite its recent secession, the country is still plagued by civil turmoil and widespread violence. Since the start of the civil war in 2013, about 2 million people have been internally displaced. The repercussions of conflict have profoundly affected the cultural lives of many South Sudanese. 
the experience of exile has impacted people's practice of traditions, making it one of the world's most enduring refugee groups. Nonetheless, the South Sudanese are known for their adaptability, flexibility, and resilience. Many people are highly self-reliant and resourceful, and they continue to work through unpleasant situations with no complaint. Tourism South Sudan is a place to visit if you enjoy nature. There are four national parks and 14 game reserves in the country, which are home to some of Africa's most stunning and vital species. Bendinglio, Boma, Southern, and Ninuel National Parks are among the four. The most important of these four is Bendinglio National Park. This is due to the fact that it hosts the world's second largest animal migration. The first is the Serengeti Wildlife Migration in Tanzania. Bendinglio National Park was formed in 1992 in South Sudan's equatorial and eastern regions. It stretches over the Nile and covers more than 10,000 square kilometers. Giraffes, lions, buffaloes, cheetahs, leopards, gazelles, tigers, and elephants are among the creatures that call it home. Despite the fact that South Sudan has limited tourist amenities, tourists visiting Juba and other cities and towns in the country never go without lodging. Several low-cost hotels are already open, and many more are in the planning stages. The country's Juba International Airport is currently one of Africa's busiest. International flights arrive at the airport from Cairo, Addis Ababa, Nairobi and Teb, Khartoum, and Dubai. Juba is also accessible through road from Sudan, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Kenya. A number of tour businesses and automobile rental companies currently operate in the city for the convenience of guests. Agricultural activities. Given its favorable soil, water, and climatic circumstances, South Sudan is naturally endowed with agricultural potential. A vast range of agricultural products, including annual crops such as cereals and vegetables, tree crops such as coffee, tea, and fruits, cattle, fisheries, and diverse forest products, are estimated to cover around 70% of Toba land area. To realize such agricultural potential and achieve economic development and broad-based improvements in the nation's living standards, a realistic understanding of the country's initial conditions is required in order to design appropriate policy measures and an agricultural growth strategy in the near future. Currency The Sudanese pound, SDG, is the Republic of Sudan's official currency. The pound, abbreviated as SDG in the foreign currency market, has been in circulation in the country since 1992, but it was only made legal tender in 2007. The Central Bank of the Republic of Sudan is in charge of issuing the SDG and maintaining currency stability. The denominations of banknotes range from 1 to 50 pounds. Coins ranging from 1 to 50 piasters are also in circulation. The Sudanese dinar, SDD, a now defunct currency that succeeded the first Sudanese pound was replaced by the SDG, SDP. From 1992 to 2007, the dinar was in use. Since the 1950s, the pound has been in and out of circulation. In 2007, the current edition of the pound went into circulation. Three banknotes are available in 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 50 pound denominations. Healthcare facilities. Post-conflict period South Sudan faces significant hurdles in providing health care to its citizens. Health infrastructures are in shambles, the public health system is on the verge of collapse, and there aren't enough competent health workers to go around. By the end of 2015, the country will have fallen significantly short of the MDG. In addition to sustaining and strengthening health training institutions, the health system requires major resuscitation. South Sudan is widely regarded to have some of the world's worst health metrics. The Lancet published a new measure of expected human capital in September 2018 that was calculated for 195 countries from 1990 to 2016 and defined for each birth cohort as the expected years lived from age 20 to 64 years, adjusted for educational attainment, learning or education quality, and functional health status, with two health 
education, and learning adjusted expected years lived between the ages of 20 and 64. South Sudan was the country with the lowest amount of predicted human capital. This was a step up from 1990. <music> Educational facilities. South Sudanese education is based on the Republic of Sudan's educational system. The 8 plus 4 plus 4 system, in place since 1990, consists of eight years of primary education, four years of secondary school, and four years of university education. In contrast to the Republic of Sudan, where Arabic is the predominant language of instruction, English is the primary language at all levels. In the scientific and technical disciplines, there is a serious scarcity of English teachers and English-speaking teachers. This capital city is a perfect mix of everything, from culture to development. Although living in this city can be costly, it exudes an African vitality. If you plan on taking a tour of Chuba, keep in mind that it is a lovely and rapidly rising city with a lot to offer. If you enjoyed this journey, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more information.